Hi, I'm Dr. David Green, CEO of the Florida Pain Network, where we connect those in pain with pain providers statewide. Today the topic is caudal epidural steroid injections, the basics and an overview. Since the 1950s, epidural steroid injections for pain management have been a gold standard and a godsend, actually, for controlling the pain from sciatica, spinal stenosis, and other conditions that a person may be suffering from. Here's my trusty assistant, my spinal model. When you look at this, you're looking at the back of the spine, and these are the bumps that you feel in your back, the spinous processes, okay? The bones next to them on the back are called lamina. Here's one, here's one, here's one. So the first type of epidural injection that was done back in the 50s were interlaminar injections. There's a soft area here, that's where the pain doctor puts the needle, and as they go through they feel a loss of resistance, and that's when they know they're in the epidural space. Usually they'll use fluoroscopy, which is a real-time form of x-ray, and once in, that's when the numbing medicine, the steroid medication, is injected. The second type is called a transforaminal epidural steroid injection. I'll show you from the side here. This red is denoting a herniated disc, okay? This yellow is a um, nerve root coming out of this hole called the foramen. So when you have a transforaminal epidural injection, the needle goes in the area where the nerve root is exiting from the spine, and that's usually where it's getting pinched. Okay, so it's a more focal injection to help with pain relief and the results over the last decade for pinched nerves and lumbar spine have been excellent for that. Now let's get to the caudal. How is it done? What's it for? Well, a caudal injection is the easiest of epidural injections to, perfor to perform. It's an outpatient procedure. You don't need IV sedation unless that's absolutely necessary for anxiety or claustrophobia. But you don't have to put it exactly where the nerve root is being pinched. It actually goes at the very bottom. I'll show you. Lumbar, 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 sacrum. Okay. At the bottom of the sacrum, there's a space here called the sacral hiatus. And through that opening, that's where the needle goes. Okay. So here's your coccyx. It's above that, right in here. And the pain doctor will insert the needle and then push a little contrast medicine to make sure that the medicine flows. And then once that is satisfactory, you see the medicine going up into the lumbar area, that's when the doctor will put in numbing medicine and a larger volume of steroid than with the other two types, okay? Now, what's it good for? Well, if you have multiple nerve roots being pinched at one time, that steroid medicine can gravitate and cover multiple. It can cover those areas. What condition might that be? That's spinal stenosis, right? where you have arthritis overgrowing in the spine, over, uh, pinching on multiple nerve roots as they try to get out, that can be helped with a caudal epidural. You don't have to do multiple epidural injections you know, with needles all over. The caudal can cover those. Okay? So that's one that it's very good for. The second one is just a plain old herniated disc. All right? If the pain doctor's training is in a caudal and they feel comfortable with that, it works just as well as the other two at least in the studies that have been put out so far. Okay, so that's one option. Now, one thing that it works really well with is if you've had previous back surgery and it failed, called failed back surgery, and you have rods and screws in place, a caudal can be really good for that. Okay, you know, you put it in here, it just kind of gravitates up, and it can cover the areas that are causing pain. A transforaminal or an interlaminar, it can be very difficult to get the needle into the proper area when you have screws and rods and a fusion in place. Okay? That's when a caudal can be very helpful. Now, <clears throat> another one is when you do a caudal, the steroid medication can actually ro uh, go around the front of the spinal canal, and you don't really see that with the other two types. So if that's you know, necessary for, say, degenerative disc disease or whatnot, it can be very helpful. Okay? Now, last year in Pain Physician, a big review study looked at hundreds of studies on caudal epidurals. What did they find? Well, they found that for uh, sciatica conditions, a caudal epidural worked excellent for short and long-term pain relief. It may take a series of injections. You may have to do a series of three injections a couple weeks apart and then repeat that in a few months, but the results showed 
you know, over 75 to 80 percent good to excellent outcomes with that. Okay? Then they looked at spinal stenosis. The results were still good, like moderate, for short and long-term results, but they weren't a slam dunk. Okay? But they still were good. Now, then they looked at failed back surgery syndrome. They found that those were also good for short and long term. All right. Once again, not a slam dunk, but still good. If you have failed back surgery syndrome, there's only so many options out there outside of medication management. You know, then you can do this type of injection. And as a last resort, you might go to a spinal cord stimulator implant. Another condition that uh, they looked at was for you know, good old degenerative disc disease and facet arthritis. It, they were helpful. You know, they called it a fair amount of evidence. But it wasn't a slam dunk or a home run, but it shouldn't be discounted. I mean, a caudal can actually provide some, some short and long-term relief. They found a fair amount of evidence for that. All right? The risks of these procedures are small, you know, but real. So there's a small risk of infection, small risk of some bleeding, small risk of some nerve injury, and a small risk of uh, allergic reaction to the medications used. There's also a small risk of a transient elevation of, say, your blood sugars, some weight gain, water retention, and possibly some facial flushing. Those usually resolve within one to three days. All right? So caudal epidurals are a great um, addition to the repertoire of pain management for a lot of conditions, and it may be something that your pain doctor wants to use for your painful condition. FloridaPainNetwork.com. That's our website that has a lot of educational information on it. It also has, if you click on I Need a Pain Doctor or Pain Management at the top, simply put in your zip code and it'll show you those that are closest to you or you may simply call us at the number listed on the screen. I'm Dr. David Green, CEO of the Florida Pain Network. Your pain stops here.